Okay, so, um, yeah, as V said, um, North East Culture Partnership has been developing this, uh, this survey, and, and I suppose what we try to do is, is to look as many organisations as we can and um, get an idea on how, how this COVID um, epidemic is affecting people. And despite the gloom and resilience, there is a lot of um, positives out there. Um, I think a lot of people are going to face a difficult way ahead, actually. And um, I, I think what we're really finding is that museums, open air venues, places like that are going to probably find a way to reopen fairly soon. But if you're in a theatre or music or, or, or an artist or freelancer, the time ahead is going to be really, really tricky. And so we're sort of seeing a fork in the road, really, where, you know, outdoor venues, people with, with buildings that have decent spaces will find a way to redesign and, and rework their spaces. But yeah, the, the performing arts venues, places that sell tickets are, are in a really um, very difficult economic uh, situation. So, so yeah, our, our role at the Northeast Culture Partnership, I, sh I should probably give some background that we're, we're funded by all 12 local authorities in the Northeast and five universities. Um, we have a large board of arts, heritage and university um, people, as well as elected members from local authorities. So we're quite, a, we're quite a broad partnership. We're quite a small resource. There's only three of us that do two days a week, but we're a very broad Northeast um, partnership. And I suppose the main thing we've done is, is to write the, the Case for Culture, which um, was launched five years ago. And as V said, we were going to be um, refreshing Case for Culture this year, but COVID has intervened and we are we're focusing on this um, Northeast Culture and Tourism Recovery and Resilience Plan. And I suppose the three main parts of this plan is, is one, to make a case for investment to the LEPs, the combined authorities, the local authorities, and try and um, set out our case that, that culture is a really vital part of the the economic life of the region, the cultural life, obviously, and also our work with communities and all sorts of groups, um, education, children, young people, that, that really we need to be a, a key part of the region's recovery from the current situation. Um, another part of, the, of our work with this plan is to encourage investment. And I can say a bit later on about um, our conversations with Arts Council and DCMS and Heritage Lottery. And also, um, over the next few months, we, we want to do a lot of press and communications and advocacy, I guess, around what arts and heritage are doing um, across the cultural sector in the region. So our, our report, um, which we pulled together in the, over the last month, is about 50 pages long. And you'll be pleased to know I'm not going to show all of that. Um, but I'm just going to pick out a few slides. Uh, which, which I guess show some of the feedback that we've had. So, so our report is based on about 41 to one meetings with, with all sorts of arts, heritage, tourism and, and business folk across the region. Um, and we've also done a survey and, and, a, and also crystallised surveys fed into our work and I'll, I'll be handing over to Laura in a minute. But when we look at buildings, there's a lot of practical issues that people are starting to face. Um, I think it's fair to say that initially everybody did really well, shutting their buildings, furloughing their staff, finding out about um, employment law and things like that. And, and for the first few weeks, all of our leaders of our cultural buildings were very focused on that. I think what's coming through over the most recent few weeks, is that reopening is a much longer and much harder job. There are lots of practical issues, cleanliness, deep cleaning, all sorts of, um, of issues on how people are gonna move around the buildings, um, reduced access. So the, the logistics, I guess, of, of reopening um, are proving to be so much more complicated and inter interdependent than, than we had thought. I think, um, as I sort of outlined in the beginning, where you've got uh, 
sort of national trust type properties, maybe places like Beamish or bigger venues like Baltic or some of Tarnawir Museum's venues. There are going to be ways to, to route people around those, maybe like one way systems. There are going to be ways to maybe look at ticketing and control visitor numbers. So I know talking to directors of some of these organizations, some people are, are thinking there may be an opportunity in July to reopen. The downside of that is it's going to be very difficult to, to look at some of the earned income things that people rely on in terms of catering, corporate hires, education work, all of that is very difficult and hard to see that coming back. And it's also clear that um, the 45 or so organisations in the region that receive Arts Council funding have, have, a, have a bit of a cushion. The, the independent venues, music venues, uh, venues that aren't in receipt of core Arts Council funding are in a much harder position. And um, I suppose the, the, biggest, the biggest threat to, to all of those organisations is, I guess, the, the cliff edge of furloughing. Um, furloughing has been pretty great, I think, for, for organisations who've been able to move their staff into a furloughed position. Um, but uh, I was talking to uh, Sally Thomas at, at Beamish, who have a very large staff uh, number and it's really clear that for an organization like that if those staff have to come back to work if the furloughing scheme ends before they are trading properly then that is a really hard economic situation so so we're really hoping the furloughing scheme is sustained and and, and maybe at some point we'll have to look at a different type of furloughing for, for the venues like theatres which might be closed a much longer time and venues like museums which might open more quickly. So the, the view from some of our performing arts colleagues is, is really um, is turning out to be a, you know, a really long road I think. Uh, issues like touring of major theatre performances, touring of music let alone international touring all look to be postponed for the medium to long term. Um, we know that venues, maybe venues in London, who are more worried about um, ticket sales from international visitors are more, are even more vulnerable. But our big theatres, I think, are almost definitely shut until well into next year. Um, the, the big issue, I think, f emerging for a lot of theatres and music spaces is so many earn their money at Christmas. And if they can't do their Christmas programme, the Christmas panto, then that is a massive economic hit. And I, I, I believe quite a few buildings are looking at issues around long-term mothballing um, because essentially what co many colleagues in the performing arts do is the, so is the opposite of social distancing. You know, so until there is a solution to, to bringing large numbers of people together in one room, it's gonna be very hard to see how they can um, create performances and, and, and give performances. Now this, this slide um, for freelancers and artists is, is an interesting one, I think. We, uh, when we did our survey, a lot of the feedback was from freelancers and it's also, uh, it's also worth reflecting how quickly things change. So when we did our survey, a lot of the Arts Council decisions on supporting artists weren't out. And um, I, I think a number of artists we hear, a number of artists have managed to get support from Arts Council which is great. Um, we're also aware that maybe more established artists and freelancers who have property and pay rates, many of them have actually got the 10 grand support through business rates, which again is really, is really welcome. The real vulnerability seems to be at the emerging end, the, the recent graduate studio groups, which house artists on a short lease, um, maybe through some business rates deal, again, are particularly vulnerable and, uh, you know, and in many cases are really key to the life of the high street. You know, they're taking on buildings in high streets and urban spaces, which wouldn't, which would be hard to use and rent otherwise. So we really think there needs to be something much more sustained from, um, from Arts Council in a joined up way with local authorities to ensure the, the studio groups are, are sustainable. Um, I'm going to hand over at this point um, to Laura, who's going to talk a bit about the surveys they've done and, and audience confidence and attitudes. And then I'll come back to talk about 
some of our ideas and funding proposals.